I don't know if all of you think the way I do, but I wonder how is it that even God, the Supreme Being, Narayana, Krishna, the abundant love that he has, the abundant love that he can give to everybody who touches his life, right from the child he was a baby, from the time he sucked on Putana's breasts, the poisonous milk became her salvation because of Krishna throughout and then Kukja, and then all the others, every soul that touched his life. Where does he have that reserve? He never asked for anything for himself. He just gave and gave and gave. And that is why he was able to make 61,108 women feel like they were the queen of his heart and his heart alone. We have Nagna Jiti and Lakshmana next. Nagna Jiti was the Kosala princess. She was brought up with the same education, with the same militant zeal to protect her country, if need be, as her brother was. Her father had seven fearsome bulls in his kingdom. And Nagna Jitni played with these bulls like children today play with their puppies. And so her father said, the prince or the man who will be able to subdue these bulls and find a place for these bulls in his heart, he will marry my daughter. And that was what Nagnajiti's Swayambara held. Nagnajiti sent word to Balarama and Krishna came there and subdued those bulls. Lakshmana, she was the only child to her father and so her father wanted her to marry Arjuna the Pandava prince because he thought Arjuna could protect his kingdom. And what did he do? He devised the same test in Swayambara that caused Arjuna to win Draupadi. He had this wheel running the top with a fish swimming there and the person had to look at the reflection and shoot the eye of the fish. But Arjuna knew Lakshmana because they were cousins and he never came to the Swayamba and sent Krishna instead. And Krishna went there, won the Swayamba and won Lakshmana's heart. I hope you enjoy watching the other three queens as much as we have done presenting all of them.
Give the one in the